Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in sophomore English. We finish unit 4, our poetics unit now, with the study of two poems by two Chinese poets. We are, of course, working with uh, the Billy Joel offering of Hold Fast Your Dreams to compare themes. We're going to want to look at Biadol's, um All on page 764, and then uh, Xu Sting's um, also all on 765, which is a response. Let's look at both of these two poets who come from a tradition called the Misty Poets. We'll, we'll get to that information here in a little bit. Um, first of all, for Biedo, um, in the 1970s, Biedo's poems, notice he's born in 1949, uh, became rallying cries for those Chinese who wanted their country to become more democratic. Since 1989, when government troops gunned down protesters in Tiananmen Square, it's a large square in downtown Beijing, um, China's, uh, uh, China's capital, Beijing, Biodol has, has lived abroad since those, since, uh, those uh, days in 1989. Um, well, we're going to meet uh, Chu Tsing as well, the author of the second poem we're going to look at, also all these poems can, are, are easily read together in companion reads. As a teenager, Xu Ting, the, uh, uh, that's her pen name, was forced by political events in China to leave Beijing, the capital, and live in a small peasant village. She gained fame as a poet while still in her 20s, winning China's National Poetry Award in 1981 and in 1983. Now, if you're looking, and I hope you are, on page 764, if you're looking at the gentleman who is standing there in front of that line of tanks, this becomes, of course, one of the most famous images in all of photojournalism. It was a pivotal moment, June the 5th, 1989. There were student demonstrations that were happening in Beijing because of some of the political oppressive policies of the Chinese government. And you had an unknown individual who stood in front of these tanks and stopped those tanks. And of course, in the process, this became one of the most famous representations of defiance. I want you to jump over to 765 really quickly before we study these two poems together. Biado and Xu Xing, both, I hope you're reading with me, belong to a group of Chinese writers known as the Misty Poets. Influenced by Western poets and breaking with Chinese tradition, the Misty Poets used vivid imagery and expressed strong personal emotions. By speaking up for individual feelings, they expressed a quiet opposition to the government of China. In also all, Chu Xing will answer uh, um, Bi Zhou's poem, All. So we're going to look at these two poems from the perspective of theme, and we're going to ask about how these two poems kind of play off of each other. Let's begin, first of all, with the poem, All. Then we will listen to the poem, Also All, and then we'll study them together, all right? And get a sense of how they're similar, how they're quite different poems. All. Um by Bei Dao, translated by Donald Finkel and Juliang Chen. All is fated, all cloudy, all an endless beginning, all a search for what vanishes, all joys grave, all griefs tearless, every speech a repetition, every meeting a first encounter. All love buried in the heart. All history prisoned in a dream. All hope hedged with doubt. All faith drowned in lamentation. Every explosion heralds an instant of stillness. Every death reverberates forever. And now the second poem, 765. Also all, in answer to Beidou's All by Xu Ting. Translated by Donald Finkel and Jin Sheng Yi. Not all trees are felled by storms. Not every seed finds barren soil. Not all the wings of dream are broken. Nor is all affection doomed to wither in a desolate heart. 766. No, not all is as you say. Not all flames consume themselves, shedding no light on other lives. Not all stars announce the night and never dawn. Not every song will drift past every ear and heart. No, not all is as you say. Not every cry for help is silenced, nor every loss beyond recall. 
Not every chasm spells disaster. Not only the weak will be brought to their knees, nor every soul be trodden under. It won't all end in tears and blood. Today is heavy with tomorrow. The future was planted yesterday. Hope is a burden all of us shoulder, though we might stumble under the load. It's a compelling set of poems to gather that we want to pay attention to. And here's what we're going to ask after we work level one for both poems. What is the theme of both of these poems? How is it similar? How is it quite different? And it's clear that the two poets are building off of each other and, of course, historic events, no question. There was a lot of feeling that among the demonstrators in China at the time in 1989 that maybe this was the end of it all. That it was, there was no way, there was absolutely no way that all of this could somehow, you know, be fixed or whatever. Let's go to it now. What is the, specifically, what is the poem all saying? All is faded, all cloudy. Let's put it in 2B really quickly. Notice the repetitions that are occurring here over and over again. All an endless beginning, all a search for what vanishes, all joys grave, all griefs Tearless. In other words, put it in your own words. What is it that he's saying about life? Well, some sophomores have said basically he's just saying that life is in the end kind of crappy. That life in the end is faded and it's always bad. Notice all love buried in the heart. He says every speech is a repetition. Nothing new under the sun we can kind of think about. We think about uh, Rutke's uh, waking, at, it comes to mind the same notion that there's just no point in all of this. It's very difficult to find any hope in a poem like this. Notice mentioning hope, all hope hedged with doubt, all faith drowned in lamentation, sadness, crying. Every explosion heralds an instant of stillness, every death reverberates forever. That is to say, not a lot of hope in a poem like this. Everything is kind of like sad and depressing. There is no point. Every, um, every meeting is a first encounter. There's nothing new under the sun, we might say it that way, from the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes, um, that famous line. But then we have the response. Notice the defiant voice of jung -si that will say it this way. Not all trees are felled by storms. Not every seed finds barren soil. Let's pause for a moment and say this. Notice that the word all and the word every that got repeated in the first poem are both used in the first two lines on page 765. Not all the wings of dreams are broken, nor is all affection doomed to wither in a desolate heart. Pause and write it down. What is her statement here? Well... Yeah, it's true that a whole lot of life is terrible and bad, but in the end, there is hope. Notice two times she says it. No, not all is as you say. Not all flames consume themselves, shedding no light on other lives. Not all stars announce the night and never dawn. Not every song will drift past every ear and heart. No, not all is as you say. In other words, what is her message? What is it she's saying? Not every cry for help is silenced. Not every loss beyond recall. Not every chasm spells disaster. Not, every, not only the weak will be brought to their knees, nor every soul be trodden under. We think about that picture of that young student standing in front of all those tanks. Those tanks stopped. They did not run over him. And that, of course, was compelling. By the way, if you want to Google an image, a uh, video of this, the tanks tried to move around that student, and he moved to the left and to the right, and he would not allow those tanks to move. It was a compelling moment in the history of rebellion. It was a compelling moment in the history of humanity. And she says, it won't all end in tears and blood. Today is heavy with tomorrow. The future, like this, this of course is her key line, line 20. The future was planted yesterday. Hope is a burden all of us shoulder, though we might stumble under the load. When you're a senior, we're going to do a famous poem by W.B. Yeats. Write this down at 3A. We're going to do a famous poem called Second Coming. The center cannot hold. This idea that things start spinning out of control. And the instinct is to say it's all over and there's no point in hoping. Of course, we can talk now 2A about each of these two poems. 
if the message in all is there's not a lot of hope, the message in the second poem, right, that is to say in the second poem we have also all. The reminder here is, no, you know what? There's reason to hope. There is reason to hope. And the reason is because of the things that have happened in the past that will give rise to the possibility of hope in the future. Of course, notice it at, at 2B. We have powerful repetitions going on in these poems, don't we? The use of the word all, the use of the word every is kind of like a, a, a mantra that reminds us um, of what really is being said here. It isn't all bad even though it might seem all bad. It isn't all lost, even though it might seem like it's all lost. We have reason to believe. We have reason to hope. At 3A, what is for you the titles that will teach you both of these two ideas? What is the text for you that teaches that pretty much everything is kind of jacked up and there's no point in it, that all history is prisoned in a dream and there's no escape out? What is the text for you that teaches the opposite, the also all, that says there's reason to hope, there's reason to keep hope alive, even in the middle of some really, really bad stuff, might be political, it might be environmental, it might be social, it might be economic. And finally at 3B, which one of these two poems do you more easily resonate with? Are you more of the glasses half empty, half empty versus half full kind of person? Which one of the two? That is to say, are you more like the first poem, all? You know, it doesn't really matter what happens in the end. Everything seems to kind of be fated to be bad. Or are you more hopeful in your orientation, also all? The idea that, you know what, we have good reason to kind of look forward and to believe in things and to know that there's some reason to hope. Well, there you go, an introduction to poetics in Unit 4. I hope that you've enjoyed it. We now turn in our study on to drama texts and Antigone and Julius Caesar. Thank you.